Welcome to Ignani.com. Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Chapter 2 SQL Server 2012 Tools. Part F Introducing the Query Designer. In our previous video, you were introduced to Query Editor and some of its features. With all of Query Editor's features to assist in writing queries, a user still requires some knowledge of SQL to write and execute a query. Also the user has to remember or have some documentation related to the tables, the columns, relationship and other details before starting to write a query. For those who are either not familiar with the SQL, or who do not remember the data model, or for those who would want to be more productive, Query Designer is the tool that you need. It is a graphical user interface to create queries. To use the Query Designer, all you need is the list of tables and the columns from which you can query, and get the data. With such little information, and a few clicks using Query Designer, you can generate pretty good SQL statements. When you first start working with a database, the Query Designer will help you become familiar with the tables and columns in it. It will also help you to build queries quickly and easily. By analyzing the SQL generated by the Query Designer, users who are learning SQL can better understand and learn quickly. Let me take you through a scenario, which will help you to understand the Query Designer better. I will be using the AdventureWorks 2012 database. It's a good example database to start off with. There are a lot of tables, and for this scenario let us create a query to get the person name and his address. Your DBA has given you a list of all the tables that you need and the field names as well. Let me assume that you only know what I have covered till now in this tutorial, that means you have zero knowledge about SQL. So writing SQL queries is totally ruled out. In such a scenario, if you want to query the database using the Query Designer, then I promise you that it's just a matter of few clicks. I'll assume that you have already started SQL Server Management Studio and have already connected to the database engine, which contains the AdventureWorks 2012 database. Let's open a new query tab in the query editor using the existing connection. Make sure you select the AdventureWorks 2012 database from the available database drop down. Right click anywhere in the query editor and select Design Query in Editor, or press Ctrl plus Shift plus Q, which opens up the query designer window. Since we are creating a new query, the Add Table dialog box appears automatically. The person name and address information is stored in six different tables. Select these tables from the Add Table dialog box. To select more than one table at a time, hold the Control button while selecting the tables. I will select three tables now. After selecting the tables, click the Add button to add them to the Query Designer, and click close button to close the dialog box. This brings us to the query designer. As you can see, the designer consists of three panes. Diagram pane. This is the topmost pane which displays the tables that are used by the query. You can see all the tables that we selected in the add tables dialog box. It also lets you add or remove tables and select columns that you want to include in the query. You can also create relationships between tables using this pane. Criteria pane. This is the middle pane, which displays all the columns that you select in the diagram pane. It lets you set the filter criteria, and the sort order and type. You can also use this pane to add or remove columns, give alias names to the selected columns, create calculated columns and so on. SQL pane. This is the last pane in the query designer window. This pane displays the SQL query. 
as you work in the diagram and criteria panes, the query designer generates the SQL query based on the information from the other two panes, and displays it in this pane. You can also modify the SQL query in this pane, which will be reflected in the other two panes. We selected three tables from the Add Table dialog box. Diagram pane allows us to remove a table if required. To remove a table, select the table and press Delete key. Our query requires six tables. Let us add the remaining ones. To add additional tables, right click anywhere in the diagram pane, and select Add Table from the shortcut menu, to open up the Add Table dialog box, from where you can select the tables. Let me arrange the tables in the diagram pane. If the database has all the relationships defined, then as you add the tables, you should see the relationships appear between the tables that you selected. If the relationships are not created, you can create the relationships in the diagram pane by dragging and dropping the columns. Now it's time to select the columns that you would want to appear in the query result. In the diagram pane, select the columns by checking the checkbox next to the column name. As you select the column names, they start to appear in both the criteria pane and SQL pane. To remove a column, simply uncheck it. Once you are done selecting the columns, click the OK button, which will close the query designer and load the generated query into the query editor. Press the Execute button to execute the query, and the results appear in the results pane. However, there seems to be a small problem. Though we got all the rows that we were looking for, these two column names do not appear correctly. Let's fix it. To reopen the generated query in the Query Designer, select it, and press Ctrl plus Shift plus Q, which opens up a Query Designer window, and it will have the query loaded and ready for you to modify it. In the Criteria pane, scroll down to the row containing the column details. We can't change the column name, however we can give an alias name as we want it to appear in our query result. Let me give an alias for the name column as state, and change the other alias to country. Click OK. And execute the query. You can see the names appear as required. If required, we can open the query again in the query designer and modify it, and it can be done even after we modify the query outside the designer. Let me demonstrate it. Let me update the query in the query editor to sort it on first name field. If we reopen the query in the query designer again, in the criteria pane for the first name field, you can see that the sort type and sort order are already set. Let me change the sort field. Remove the sort type and sort order details for first name field and set it for the city field. Now, when you check out the query, you can see that it's modified appropriately, and when executed you can see the data sorted on city field. We can also set the sort type and sort order, for more than one field if required. Other than sorting, we can use the criteria pane to set the filters. Let me demonstrate this by adding a filter to get only those records where the title field match is Mr. In the criteria pane, enter the word Mr. in the filter column for the title field. As you finish entering the filter value, notice the query designer modifies it to add other necessary details for the filter. The same gets updated in the generated query as well.
execute and you can see only those records which matches the filter. I would also like to tell you that, Query Designer is not just for those queries that were generated using Query Designer, you can open any query, the same way as you do for the queries generated by the Query Designer. Although I just demonstrated on using the Query Designer to create a select statement, it even allows you to create insert, update, and delete statements as well. To create one of these types of SQL statements, right click anywhere in the Query Designer window and select Change to, from the shortcut menu, and then select the type of query that you would want to create. Let me select update from the list to generate an update statement. After selecting the query type, select a table from the add table list. You can change the query type at any point of time. Let me change the query type to insert. Select the columns from the diagram pane. The insert statement skeleton is ready. That should be sufficient for now to show you the query designer's features and how easy it is to use. This brings us to the end of chapter 2. In the next chapter, I will continue with databases in SQL Server. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Learn through videos. Get your questions answered from experts, take online test to evaluate. Post all your questions at our site, our experts will be there, to answer. Feel free to contact us.